I love drywall day on For Your Home because it's when a house really starts to take shape. Join us because we've got walls and floors and doors and tile and even siding all going on today on For Your Home. We started with a 1920s arts and crafts bungalow that was way too small for our growing family. We got creative with a great plan for a new addition and put together tradespeople all under the direction of Shannon Miller, our general contractor. Now everybody's been working really hard on this project and it's turning out great. See all our beautiful purple walls? Well, it's not paint, it's our drywall. If you thought that drywall was all the same, get ready to be surprised today. Because just like other building materials, drywall has been greatly enhanced to help meet the demands of today's homeowners. Now, all the drywall that we put in the house resists mold, mildew, and moisture. It's also fire resistant, and it's certified to improve indoor air quality. And you know, it's just as easy to install and to finish this as standard drywall. And best of all for me, it's made right here in the USA. Now throughout the house though, we selected different types of purple drywall that would give us additional benefits. Let's take a look in the hallway. Stairways and hallways, they all get a lot of abuse in our homes. And in this one, we have a hallway that starts at the front of the house and goes all the way to the back. We call it a shotgun hallway. So we decided to select a drywall that could really stand up to that. And this is high abuse drywall. Now, if you look at this purple surface, that's our face paper, and it is a tougher paper than on standard drywall. The core that's inside of it, well, it's denser, so it can stand up to balls being bounced around to it or anything on wheels. It's a great choice for hallways. When you have six people living in a house, it can get really noisy. Now, this is the room that's going to be the mother-in-law's bedroom, and we have the baby's nursery right across the hallway. We decided since this room backs up to the family room where the TV is going to be, that we wanted to reduce the amount of sound coming in and going out of the baby's nursery. So we installed what is called sound break drywall. How it works is there's a layer of polymer that's between two layers of drywall that stops that sound from transferring from one room to the other. Boy, you know, I wish they would have had this when my kids were little. My house would have been a lot quieter. Now this is one of our children's bedrooms and being a parent, I know they can take a lot of abuse. So for this room, we selected to work with a high impact drywall. This is so dense, I couldn't believe this until I saw it for myself. You can actually swing a baseball bat at this and it'll dent it, but it won't make a hole. And that means you're not gonna have a lot of repairs going on. Now I'm not advocating people play ball in the house, but we all know that they like to. Now, the way that it is so strong is there's a fiberglass mesh that is embedded into the core of this. That stops things from going through it. So you can see that we have lots of choices for drywall when we're doing a project like this. So instead of just hanging the plain old white, why don't you think about putting a little purple drywall with a little bit better benefits in your house? With the inside well protected, let's see what we're doing to protect the outside of this house. We selected vinyl siding for the exterior of the bungalow. Not just any vinyl siding, but insulated. Take a look at this. See this layer of foam that we have right here? This is applied to the plank when it's manufactured. It's never gonna delaminate or come apart. What it allows us to do is to work with a much wider board face and it's much more rigid. A great feel when you touch it. It also is gonna provide us with a great noise reduction benefit. You know, just like inside the house, we're using drywall to help cut down some of the noise. On the outside, we're in an urban setting, so we wanna to try to keep some of those street noises outside. Another benefit is the energy efficiency of it. It's gonna keep this house cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter. And you know, Liz and Lee certainly don't need to be hit with high utility bills once they get moved into the house. Now I worked with a specialist who helped me put together the colors for the exterior of the house. I put together a whole big palette of colors, sent them over to Liz and Lee, and then you guys got to do the final decision. We did, and thank you for helping it narrow it down because if we had not, I don't know if we'd have made a selection. 
Well, there's a lot of choices out there, you know, and especially like dark colors. I knew you guys wanted to go with a dark color. And now with vinyl, you know, it doesn't fade. It's guaranteed to keep that color. But I'm even more curious as to why you decided to go with vinyl. You also had a ton of other options. We had a lot of options, but wood, given the termite damage we've already remedi remediated, not an option. So yeah, that was I can see where you're really down. We ran into what about sixteen thousand dollars extra cost yes. for termite damage. You would not be a wood cannon. No. Now fiber cement, pre-stained at the factory, was an option. However, it does require maintenance down the line. And we looked at it and said, you know, we want to be here for a long time. What are our other options? The vinyl option was the best option. It's a lifetime yeah. guarantee, minimal to no maintenance, got a lot of color options. We're already painting the home inside. I didn't want to have to paint outside too. You know, well you really did your homework. You were just really, I'm not going to be outside on a ladder painting anymore. We're going to go easy with it. Well, I think you made a great choice. This dark gray is absolutely beautiful. And I hate to tell you this, but if you haven't talked to Ron, the superintendent yet, I think he's ready for you to start painting. I think he is, and if and I, if I don't miss my guess, I'm gonna be here for a while. There's yeah, a lot so of purple inside. <laughs> you got to turn it into another color. Correct. I wanted to share with you the great tile selections that Liz and I made for the house. You know, it's so much fun to go into the tile stores and start looking at all the options that they have, but you need to be prepared. First of all, we had already selected our cabinet colors, so always make sure you take your samples of your cabinet color with you because you gotta match everything up. And you never wanna order anything until you know every detail that you're gonna be using in that room. Let's start with the kitchen, my favorite room in the house. Okay, we have two different colors of cabinets that we're gonna be going with. This nice cream color with this gray glaze over it, that's what we're gonna be using for the main body of the cabinets that are gonna come around the walls. In the island, we're going to this great oasis color. I just love how blue and how much fun it is. Don't be afraid to use color in your kitchen. You know, go ahead, throw some color in. Now, Liz is kind of a gray tone kind of uh, decorator, and so we wanted to keep it in those colors, but introduce a little bit of blue. So grays can go blue or go brown. Always make sure you're going in the right tones. This is the glass tile that we're going to be using as the backsplash. Beautiful, it'll clean up great. It'll be a nice shiny surface. Now, over the range, we have a great hood going over that area, and it just screams out for a decorator, you know, a highlight in that space. So, we chose this great Baroque design, and this is going to be framed out, um, and then this will be the backsplash, nice little frame, and then a square of this right over the stove. I think that's so beautiful. And then we're going to go with a quartz material for the countertops. This is designed to look like Carrera marble, but not to have the headaches of it. This one you can let the kids, you know, have fun with their Kool-Aid or their lemons or limes and not ruin the surface. And it just really looks beautiful. So that was a great option for the kitchen. Now to the laundry room. If there's ever going to be a room at your house that you just go all out for, make it the laundry room. Nobody likes to do laundry, so let's have some fun in there. Liz really took my advice. The cabinets are the same color as she's using in the kitchen, but for the backsplash, look at this really fun tile that she checked or selected. It's got some metal in it, it has granite, they've got painted surfaces, glass, really a fun tile. And then the countertop she's gonna have in there in the folding area is this beautiful piece of solid quartz material again. But this has little pieces of its recycled material, so it has little pieces of mirror and glass that are embedded into it. Look how that sparkles. Now what a great you know, room for the queen of the laundry room. I just love that. Now, the guest bathroom. The guest bathroom in this house has got to serve a lot of purposes. We have the mother-in-law using it. We have all the guests that are coming to the house because we don't have a powder room, didn't have room for one and it's going to be the kids' bathroom. So we wanted to choose something that could be dressed up but still be fun. This is a tile that we selected for the floor in that area. This is called linen, and I have used this Baltic linen in, I don't know, half a dozen projects that I've done, and I've always been really happy with it. Because if you look closely, see these little striations? It brings in a lot of color opportunities. It has a little blue, a little taupe, a little cream. So we played off of all of those different color options. This tile, and I love this, because see the texture on it? These look like hand-casted tiles. This is going to be our accent tile in the shower area. The rest of it is just going to be white tile, but that's going to add a lot of fun color to it. Then the cabinets are this great taupey color, 
And for the countertop, look at this. This looks just like a piece of marble, but again, it's a solid quartz material, so we don't have to worry about the kids, you know, toothpaste or anything that's gonna be going on to this. It'll look just as beautiful 10 years from now as it does when we put it in. The master bath. You know, you can have a lot of fun with the master bath or you can go elegant. We decided for this house, we were gonna go retro. You know, this is a 1920s arts and crafts bungalow. So we went to the traditional black and white bathroom. Still the most popular color combination out there. Difference is though, we jazzed it up a little bit. Take a look. How about this for the floor? Now this cannot get more traditional. The plain octagon black and white tile. This is on the floor of the bathroom as well as the shower. Then for the countertops in there, we went with this. Look at this fun, solid quartz again. Recycled material, a little bit of mirror in it, and the black and the glass, really dressy and pretty. This is the cabinets that are in there, just a plain white cabinet. And this tile, look what fun it is. This is going to be a vertical stripe in the master shower. The rest of it will be white tile to tie back in with the floor and that retro look. But here's how we jazzed it up, these two elements. The vertical stripe of the various sizes of black and white and stone tile and the countertops. So if you look at this, I think Liz did a great job in bringing a lot of fun and excitement into these spaces just by the tiles she chose. It's been a noisy day here because the hardwood floors are being installed. Now, our original plan was to keep the old hardwoods and only put in new hardwoods in the addition. But we ran into so much termite damage that it became a game changer. Take a look. This is Shannon Miller, and he's our general contractor on the job, and a lot of times you are our major handholder, correct? Yes, definitely. Yeah. What's the biggest challenge you ran into so far? Well, the, the biggest challenge has been termites. We have discovered a lot of termite damage, a lot more than what the owner had expected. We had home inspections when they purchased the home. We had a structural engineer come into the house before we started, so we knew what to do structurally, and even they didn't see the additional uh -huh. damage. But once we started opening up walls, we found a lot of damage on nearly every wall. And, and this damage had happened quite some time ago. There was no active termites. Because it was treated for termites like about 10 years That's ago. That's right. And there was no damage that was visible. There was no way to see it from underneath the house, and there was nowhere, no way to see it from above. Uh -huh. The only way we found it was getting into the walls, and literally um, the mantle was eaten from underneath. The, some of the hardwood floor, the bottom side of the hardwood floor was eaten. Around the windows, um, we had the trip at the triple window, the entire triple well, you're window. You're telling me this window right yeah, here. Yeah, this window behind right us here. here. And all we the wanted to keep supports. the windows, and they were okay. It was just yep. all the support. Yeah, we, we ended up taking all of the supports out, all the structural support, and putting all in new. And we were able to keep the existing windows to keep the integrity of the home. So what was holding this house up that it wasn't falling down well, around him? You know, it's interesting that you say that. Um, I think if the house was drywall, uh -huh. there would have been a lot more movement. But the house was lath and plaster, and it kind of locks everything together. Yeah. And it let the, um, it kind of, it held, literally held some of the areas together. Okay, so what's our next step here? Well, now the new in the back and the old is kind of at the same place. You can see the wires. We've, we've wired the entire yep. house. We've got all the plumbing done, all the mechanical, the heating and air conditioning. Uh, the next step is to get the inspections done uh -huh. from our local county, and then we will start with insulation, and then sheetrock, mm -hmm. and new floors, and then cabinetry, trim, and tile. Great. Well, I'm excited about it. I know them with their little baby in the apartment. They're yeah. ready to get moved in. Yes, definitely. One of the last steps in a house project like this is the finishing of the hardwood floors. I'm gonna to get together with Liz. She has another decision to make, and that is what color does she want her new hardwood floors to be? Hey Liz. Hey. Thanks so much for coming out and looking at this because we need to make a decision on the color of stain we're gonna put on the hardwood floors. Okay. And they're gonna be finished installing them hopefully today and exciting. You know, yeah, it is exciting. You know, are you getting excited to get moved back into your house? Absolutely. Yeah. Can't well, wait. I always say when the hardwood floors go down, the end is in sight. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what I did is I put out four different colors of stains because you said you wanted to kind of stay in the brown tones. Absolutely. And so I've got four different shades of brown. And one of the things I want you to think about is hardwood floors are what I consider to be your hardscape. It is going to be what it is as opposed to a wall color that can change. Okay. 
The other part of your hardscape in your house is your cabinetry color because your cabinets, chances of you ever repainting your cabinets are slim to none. Right. So those are your hardscapes. In your bathroom, your tile is a hardscape, but in your bathrooms, you have tile floors, so that doesn't come into play at all with us on choosing our colors, all right? Now, if we had other features like stone on the fireplace or any of those kind of things, we'd want to consider that as a hardscape as well. But you're having a wood mantle, Rob's building a wood mantle for you, right. and he can adjust his stain based on what we choose, right. okay? So I've got your cabinet colors out here of the kitchen cabinets, and this is our island color, which I love that color. Yes. Are you happy with it? I'm very happy with that. Oh, uh, great. Okay, so tell me what you think about these four colors. I definitely, Lee and I both definitely like the darker stain, so I okay. can probably immediately tell you that's probably gonna be too light for okay. what we like. All right. Um, I feel like those two might have too much of a honey tone, uh -huh. Maybe? They do. They do have a little bit of a, a golden hue to them. In fact, they're so close together that it's really hard to even tell apart. I know. Apart. It really yeah. is. Okay, so you like the darker walnut color? I definitely do. I feel like you can really see the movement in the wood with that uh -huh. dark walnut, and I think that it looks... I was really concerned about that Oasis cabinet color, um, yeah. matching that up to a stain. So let's take a look at it here. I think that looks good, don't I you? I think that's really pretty. Okay. Now... Just like you pick out a lot of things from swatches and different colors, stain is something that preliminarily you can look at the colors like in your paint store or like we have the samples laid out for you here. Right. But the really the true test on picking out a stain is to look at it when it's wet. Okay. Because these don't have a polyurethane over the top, so they have a little bit more of a haze look to them. So let me stir up this. This is that dark walnut. I figured that was going to be the way you went. So we've got this to work with. And I'm just going to take a rag and just get a little bit of it on, on here. All right. And then I want to put it onto our wood down here. OK. So that is going to look more like what it's going to look like than the sample there. OK. Yes. And it's going to be. There actually will put it on a little bit deeper, so it will get a little darker, but you do see the grain come out much more so than, you know, when it's wet than when it's right. dry. Yeah. So are you still happy with that? I love that. Yep. Okay. What I'm going to do, though, is before you say, yeah, for sure, is I want you guys to look at it like when it gets to be dark outside. Okay. And so that you can tell, is that too dark? Okay. All right. Probably not because you guys like the darker colors. We do. But, okay. So those are our color choices. Now, the next step along this hardwood floor process, it's kind of elaborate because we don't want them to put the stain on or put the finish on until the guys are through doing all the rough work. Right. And so once that part, portion of it's done, once the drywall guys get in here, and I know you and Lee are going to be doing your own painting. Mm -hmm. Once they get in here, they really take over the house for like a week. Okay. Because it takes them that long to sand it and you don't want anybody to walk on it after it's freshly sanded and then to stain it. And then when they start putting on the coats of polyurethane over the top of it, you gotta have no dust, no traffic. Right. All right, so you're gonna need to time your work and Shannon will time his work so that we can let the hardwood guys have it all. Now, after they get the second coat or the first coat of polyurethane on, we're going to have to let it dry for 48 hours, I would recommend. Some okay. say 24 or less, but I like to go a weekend. Then we can put brown paper over all the floors, and we can go back into working. And then once they're through, 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 through with everything, totally yeah, I know, <laughs> then they can come back in, and they'll put the final coat of polyurethane over, because that'll hide any little scratches or anything that happens. Perfect. And then you get to move in. Yay! <laughs> all right, thanks a lot, Liz. I'll let all the guys right. know what you picked out. Thanks. Picking out the doors for the house was a lot of fun, and I got some great help from David Graham. Take a look. You know, David, it wasn't easy to pick out the doors that we were gonna put into this house, and not because I didn't have choices, but because I had so many choices. Right, there's a lot of choices, and it can be tough. Uh, we decided to go with the divided light look with matching mm -hmm. side lights, stained in mahogany, and what it does is it really captures the kind of elegant simplicity that you typically find in a bungalow style home. So right, you know, we didn't want to, it's kind of different between arts and crafts and bungalow, you know, they kind of cross over with the definition, but yet I like the way that this defines the house. Now, we've had a lot of issues with wood around here, and when you look at the door and you touch the door, it looks like a wood door, but our past experience with termites 
We like the fact that this isn't wood. Right. So you want to have the beauty of wood. People get excited about it, uh, especially in a nice mahogany stain. Uh, but wood can be tough to deal with, especially down the line as it rots, twists, warps, cracks. And has to be refinished. Has to be refinished constantly. It's a, it's a big headache. Mm -hmm. Looks great when you first put it in. But with fiberglass, we can achieve the beauty of wood without that long-term hassle. It's not going to split. It's not going to crack. It's not going to bow. It's not going to warp. So you really eliminate all that worry. Compared to steel, it's not going to transmit heat. You put your hand up to a steel door on a hot sunny day. So yeah. uh, it really is a, a, a the best choice as far as door materials. Well, let me ask you this though. You know, a wood door is, is good for an insulated door. Is this going to be as, as good as wood is? Absolutely, this will be five times more energy efficient than really? a wood door. That's right. So uh, a couple of things. We went with the glass, which is nice because it lets light into the home. But when you let light in, people worry about, okay, am I going to get extra heat from the sun's rays? Mm -hmm. This is actually a low E glass, which means there's a transparent coating on the glass, which reflects heat from the sun's rays back outside the home. Okay. So you're able to bring warmth and, and light in without heat from the sun. And it doesn't change the color of the light coming through? It does not. Okay. It does not. The other thing is we use a polyurethane core in the door. Uh, compared to wood, uh, it's it, it doesn't let air pass through as easily. And compared to steel doors, which typically use polystyrene, uh -huh. it just covers every nook and cranny of the core of that door. So your energy efficiency is much greater than what you would see in a typical wood door or steel well, door. Well, you know, that's so important. You know, we're putting insulated vinyl siding on the outside of the house to help with the energy use. So we don't want Liz and Lee to be paying twice as much in their utility bills. So anytime we can save them money with great products like this, that's beneficial to us. Yep, energy efficiency, low maintenance, and then if you can combine that with the beauty and detailing, if you look at this grain, you can see it looks and feels and Yeah, it has a great look to it. Yeah, it, it, it looks, feels, and operates just like a wood door. Okay, and how about maintenance over the years? What is gonna have to be done to this? So as long as you maintain the finish, so there's a top coat on this uh -huh. finish, as long as you maintain that, you won't have to worry about it. And depending on exposure, uh, you will typically have to do that every one to three years. As opposed to a wood door that you'd have to do every year. Every single especially year. Especially if it has a western exposure. Yep, and then with weather change you get expansion and contraction, components can start falling uh -huh. out. Uh, no matter what you do, there's going to be a lot of maintenance on a wood door. Well, you know, one of the things that I always look for when I'm selecting products for our, our show or for my clients is I look for compatible packages. This isn't the only door that we had in the house. We also had two other doors that we needed to replace, and I didn't have a problem in finding doors that were compatible in design and style with this door and yet keeping them a little bit more unique to themselves. Right, so uh, we have many different styles within the same family, so you can create a cohesive look throughout uh -huh. the home. Well, the doors are kind of dusty right now because mm -hmm. we're in the middle of construction, but I know once we get them all cleaned up and get the glass all cleaned, it's just gonna be one of the nicest additions to the house. And you know what I always say, a door is the first thing that greets your guests, so you really need to put some thought into what you're putting on there. That's right, it's the face of the home, so it's really important. Well, thank you, David, for helping us pick out the right door. Thank you, Vicki. It just seemed like such a shame to throw out all the old doors from this house. We decided to recycle a couple of the interior doors to make headboards for the kids' bedroom. Take a look. So Ron, you know it was really important for us to reuse any old part of our existing house that we could. So show us what you're doing to make the twin headboards out of our old interior doors. Okay, I took a couple interior doors that you had and I'm gonna make some headboards out of them. So the first thing I had to do is determine the height and get it cut off and cut the bottom panels out of the door. Right. So but obviously this doesn't look like it's wide enough to be correct, a twin bed correct. frame. Um, so I cut the bottom panels out and we're going to use these to widen it. Gotcha. So we cut these out of the bottom styles of the uh, doors and we're going to attach them to the sides to accommodate your bed frame. Great. So if you want to, we go ahead and attach a couple of these, okay? Great. Okay. Give me a hand. We're going to put some glue down here and we're gonna spread it out a little bit. I know it seems a little crude, but I'll just have to wipe it with my fingers. Get it spread out the best we can. And we'll put a little bit of glue on the dowels here. And we'll slide it inside the holes that we drilled. We put 3 8 inch dowels in here. Figured that would give it enough strength. If you hold that right there, we'll get it pounded in here. Okay. 
Okay. Perfect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this other side on and then we're gonna put a clamp across it. Okay. We'll use this clamp right here and another one. Clamp will grip these and hold these in real tight. Till it so dries. Till it dries. Gotcha. And then it'll be really strong. So Ron, is there gonna be a way that we can reuse these door hinges so people really know that these were the old doors from our original house? Yes, absolutely. We've got one on this side over here and we'll, we can put this one right here on this side. Perfect. And we have one on either side. Great. So are you gonna paint these doors? I think we are gonna paint them and we'll let the kids pick out a color and see what they come up with. Oh, that'd be good. You wanna help me finish this up? Yeah. Do you want to know more about the projects today or our guests? Visit us on the web. You're going to find great behind the scenes shots, streaming video, project ideas. We even have an e-newsletter with tips and ideas. It's foryourhome.com. Wow, we had a busy day here at the bungalow. You know, both the inside and the outside are really shaping up beautifully. Now, I hope you'll join me next time right here on For Your Home because we have cabinets going in, we have beautiful decorative moldings that are gonna be dressing up the dining room, and Liz and Lee are gonna start painting. See you next time right here on For Your Home. I love drywall day on For Your Home. It's, ready? <laughs> so, we decided to use a high abuse wall. <laughs> high abuse, that's the sound of ripping all of a sudden. We're ready. You ready, David? Yes, yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. We'll open up. Open up. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's better. All right. There we go. Stand by. Okay, stand by.